Welcome back. According to the CDC, approximately 50,000 emergency department visits result from unintentional medication overdoses among children under the age of five. Pediatrician Dr. Scott Cyrus joins us this morning to talk more about keeping our children safe. Good morning, Dr. Cyrus. Thanks for being with us. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Talk with us a little more about these statistics and number and the numbers of kids that are accidentally poisoned or come up with overdoses simply because of the medication that they've come in contact with. Well, you know, you mentioned the 50,000 visits, and we know that that's a really an underestimate because some visits uh, or some overdoses are not even reported or not taken to the emergency room department. But we see many times from mismeasurements, and we see uh, double dosing, you know, the mother doses and then uh, steps away, and dad comes in, doses the child again, something along those lines. 90% uh, of the time, uh, you know, the, the children get into the medication themselves because it's not put up in a in a safe place and so you know uh tylenol is is readily available uh the children it's flavored it can be grape cherry uh the children uh and like that so they can just open the cap up if it's not securely locked and then you know down the down the medicine uh cannabis so the edibles are really uh it's, it's amazing it's i think the the latest statistics was up 1,300% over the last four years just because of the availability of the edibles. A lot of us as parents have heard from a very early time, aspirin is so bad, stay away, stay away, stay away. But that's just one of the medications, over-the-counter drugs, that parents and maybe even babysitters or grandparents who haven't had little ones in a while, let's go through kind of the common medications that, that people need to avoid the, for, when it comes to the children. Well, like you said, aspirin, we don't even use it in childhood. Uh, basically, anyone under the age of 18 is is, is uh, really, it is not a good idea to use aspirin because of its uh, ability to give us a, a even worse uh, situation called rise disease. But ibuprofen, we don't use ibuprofen under six months. We don't really recommend Tylenol under three months because if they do run a fever, we want that infant to, we want to know that infant is running a fever so they could be having an infection and being masked by some of the um, Tylenol or even ibuprofen. Uh, Benadryl and cough medicines. Uh, Benadryl uh, can make our children extremely sleepy and uh, therefore decrease their respiratory effort. And because of that low oxygen, level they could have seizures they could have some other neurological events and so I even under six years of age we really don't recommend cough medicines especially the mixed preparation cough medicines and Benadryl uh, our cough medicines we, we recommend you know just a uh, honey now it's kind of a more hmm. of a coating effect and then Orogel. Orogel has lidocaine or benzocaine. It's a it's a numbing medicine, and if they get too much of that, uh, can cause seizures. Obviously, can cause a problem with their uh, not feeling uh, the the medicine going down, and can actually get into their lungs. Let's talk about prevention. I mean, obviously, keeping the medication up and out and away. You know, a lot of medications, even the the lids and stuff, are childproof, so it's almost impossible. Even adults have difficulty sometimes opening them. Right. You know, to try to prevent the medicine from getting into the wrong hands at the wrong time, using the safety lids is good. But you have to remember, they're not childproof. Uh, children are little Houdinis. They can they can open things um, a lot of times adults can't open. And so keeping them up in a way and in a locked area, uh, don't just set them on the you know nightstand or um, uh, on a TV tray so that there's readily access there. Uh, also, when you think about overdosing, many times people will just reach in and grab a tablespoon or a teaspoon out of the drawer. Use a measurement uh, syringe or spoon that actually has little marks on them so that you get the accurate dose for that particular child. And remember, if it's expired or if, if medicines, especially prescription medicines even, uh, are just uh, finished, get rid of them properly. And, and, and remember the, the 800 number, if you're concerned that your child may have taken an overdose, uh, calling the poison control number uh, is extremely important and they can advise you on what to do. And that's 800-222-1222. Yeah, so often you'll just, you could have that kind of on the cabinet inside the, the door. Um, that way you always have that, or on the refrigerator, that's where we had it when the kids were little. We have about 30 seconds left. What are kind of the signs or symptoms if you should notice your child being lethargic, uh, throwing up? What are some of the symptoms? 
Well, yeah, like you mentioned, you know, being extremely sleepy, um, unable to wake them up. Uh, you should be able to wake your child up, even though they're maybe grumpy, maybe sleepy. Uh, you should be able to wake them up. If they're, if, if you notice they're very shallow breathing, obviously any type of shaking or seizure-like activity, you should call 911. Dr. Cyrus, as always, we appreciate you visiting with us. We'll see you again next month. Thank you very much for having me. A new campaign shining a light on Oklahoma talent. After the break, the plan to bring in more tourists and some of the musicians getting their chance to shine.